Hey Kids Planet, it's me, Hannah. And I'm Christian. And we want to welcome you back to KP, KP Studios. Studios. Where we've been talking all about Christmas traditions. Yep, those are all the fun things we get to do with our family and friends at Christmas time. Exactly. Like eating pickles, laughing like donkeys, and running in circles. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, I was just saying if you were paying attention, but it's actually things like decorating the Christmas tree, hanging Christmas lights, making gingerbread houses, watching Christmas movies, and so much more. Oh, thank goodness! I actually thought you and your family ate pickles, laughed like donkeys, and ran around in circles for Christmas. No, but maybe we should start making that a tradition. Uh, no. Okay, sorry mom. But I will say my favorite thing that my family does at Christmas is decorate gingerbread houses together. Ah, yes. See, that's more like it. Yeah, and Christmas time is the best. It sure is. And last week, we got to see what a lot of people here in New Mexico like to do at Christmas. We also saw some of the things that different states around the U.S. like to do, too. Yep, and today we're going to venture outside the U.S. and see what people like to do at Christmas time around the world. Oh, I cannot wait, because today we're going to focus on Christmas traditions in Canada, Australia, and Europe. As a matter of fact, we have a special guest from one of those places for you to join us in our KP Studios kitchen. Come on, let's go. Welcome to KP Studios kitchen. This is our friend Anya, and she's been coming to Sagebrush for many years. Yes. So Anya, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, um, I moved um, with my family from Germany. I was born originally in Germany, and yeah, we've been attending Sagebrush since 2008. Yeah, we love Sagebrush, it's a great church, and my kids absolutely love it, so yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Germany is actually one of the countries in Europe that we want to talk about today. Anya, can you tell us a little bit about your um, German traditions that you grew up with? Yes, every year we do an ornament with our picture, in it and um, add it every year to our tree. So when we open the box for Christmas and put the ornaments on a tree, then we get to see them, you know, wow, what we looked like 10 years ago or something like that, you know? That's yeah. so cool. Uh, yeah. So I, I think I heard somewhere about a tradition that had to do with pickles. Was that, is that true? Yes, it's true. Some of the Germans, they have a green ornament. It looks like the pickle, of course, and um, they hide it somewhere in the tree. The parents hide it. And then in the morning, uh, when the kids, they go looking for that pickle because that kid becomes um, or gets some special um, present. Well, I guess you're right up with the pickles, Christian. <laughs> Anya, so I heard that you brought a German dish for us to make mm -hmm. today. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So it's the Spätzle and it's a um, homemade noodle that they make down in Bavaria. Can we make it? Absolutely, let's do it. Let me actually show you all the ingredients. We have 500 grams of flour, we need five eggs, we need some water, a cup of water, and then we need some salt. Okay, that's it. Okay. It's very okay. simple. You just put everything in together. You okay. know, it's really easy. You guys can all do that at home as well. Okay, let's put that on here and mix it all up. All right, so I guess our dough is done. So let's turn them into Spätzle. Uh, can you just get me the Spätzle maker, what I call it? So it's like a um, colander, I guess, um, and it has holes in it. So we're gonna take this dough and we're just gonna push it right through here um, into this boiling hot water. Oh, wow. wow. See how they're falling in there? That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So let them boil for just a second. them in 
here. So the water is coming out. Alright, so we're done. So now we have some little look. Little wow, that looks dancing. so good. Yes. Look and um, what we like to eat it with um, is goulash. And goulash is um, some little meat pieces mm. in a gravy. And then the gravy just goes inside the noodles and it gives mm. it more flavor. It's that like so good. good. Or another one is yeah. with the um, cheese. You take some cheese, some Swiss oh, cheese and cheese. onions, and you put that in and you melt it all. And like, that's how the that's how actually the people eat it in Switzerland. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty popular. All right, I prepared some for you guys already, awesome. so just have a bite. So these are a little bit fried in the pan, so they have a little bit of a crunch on the outside, but soft on the inside. Okay. Oh. Go dig in. This looks right. so good. I wish I could eat it, but I have a gluten allergy. Oh, I forgot about that. Well, I'll, I'll try it for you, and I'll let you know. How okay. I'll let you know. How there you go. All Let's right. do. I'm just gonna go right in. Did it come out good? Mmm. Mm. Yo, that's really good. It is. I'm mm. so jealous. How would you say delicious in German? Say lecker. 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 Lecker, there you go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and doing this with us today. Yes. Danke. Wait, what does that mean? That means thank you that I was allowed to be here with you guys and share my recipe oh. and my tradition. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> well, thank you for coming today and making this delicious food. Cheers! Auf Wiedersehen! That means goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That was so much fun. It sure was. And we'll be sure to post this Spätzle recipe on our social media pages so you can try making it as a family. Well, the fun's not over yet because another one of our very own Christmas elves is back out there interviewing kids like you. And I heard he'll be talking about more Christmas traditions in Europe, Canada, and Australia too. That's right, Christian. So, let's see where that silly elf is now. Hello, Kids Planet. I'm Click Tinsel Toes Elf, and I'm coming from our Sagebrush Heights campus. Hi! Awesome, I love that energy. And we are gonna be back talking about some more Christmas traditions. So, what is your name? Kaylin. Awesome, Kaylin. And what is your favorite Christmas tradition? Uh, to hang out with my family. Hang out with your family? What do you like to do with your family? Um, play games. All right, what is your name? Delaney. Delaney and Awesome, what is your favorite thing to do with your family on Christmas time? Um, make gingerbread houses. Make gingerbread houses? That's a good one, that's a good one. What's your name? Jordan. And what is your favorite thing to do with your family on Christmas time? Set up the tree. Set up the tree. Do you have a favorite ornament? Uh, this jingle bell ornament. Oh, the jingle bell ornament. That's cool. That's a good one. All right. What is your name and what is your favorite Christmas tradition? My name is Connor, and my favorite Christmas tradition is to go snowboarding. Awesome. Where do you go snowboarding at? Sandia and Santa Fe. That sounds like snow. Much fun. Do you guys want to hear about some other crazy Christmas traditions around the world? Yeah. Awesome. Well, did you know that in England they have these fun table decorations called Christmas crackers? Now, it's not the type of cracker that you're thinking. These are more of like a Christmas gift, but like wrapped up, and you have to like pop it. Does someone want to try one? Yeah. All, right, all right, let's get this. I'm going to hand it to you right here. I'll go ahead and crack it. Very, very good. Now look inside, because you got some gifts in there. Ooh, that looks pretty, pretty cool. Awesome, I hope you enjoy that gift. Have a Merry Christmas. Now, you guys wanna play a game? Yeah! Awesome, now this game, it, it, it's like a quiz. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say a question, and it's gonna be multiple choice. I need you guys to raise your hand and answer. And if you get the question right, I'm gonna give you guys some jolly cosmic cash. So, the first question, which country has the legend of the yield cat? Now, according to legend, the yield cat is a huge Christmas cat that likes to eat people who don't really get colorful clothes on Christmas Eve. Now, the legend has it that these cats are really, really big. The two options that you guys have is Canada or Iceland. Raise your hand. We'll go with you right in the back. All right, who celebrates the yield cat? Canada or Iceland? Iceland. Iceland, that is correct. Good, good job. Here is your 10 Jolly Cosmic Cash. But Canada, it's not all that bad in Canada because they have a Santa Claus parade and they've been having that for over 150 years. Isn't that a while? 
All right, let's get into our next question. Which country celebrates Christmas with barbecues and beach days? Australia or France? I'm gonna go with a different one. I'm gonna go with you right here. What do you think it is? Australia or France? Australia? Australia, that is correct, mate. It is Australia. In fact, one of our old friends from Kids Planet, Andrew, he actually moved to Australia. Isn't that really cool? Awesome, and here is your 10 Jolly Cosmic Cash. All right, Kids Planet, that's all the yield time we have for today. But before I go, here's some candy. What is up, Kids Planet? I am back and I am here at Sagebrush Las Lunas. Yeah! That's the energy I like to hear, I like to hear. All right, and today we're gonna to be interviewing our friends right here about their favorite Christmas traditions. So I'm gonna ask you your name and then you gotta say your favorite tradition. Olivia. And what is your favorite Christmas tradition to do with your family? Making cookies with my sister and my mom. Making cookies, awesome. What is your favorite type of cookie? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. What about you? What is your What is your name? Eliza. And what is your favorite Christmas tradition to do with your family? Build a snowman. Build a snowman. What type of snowman? Like just like a super tall one, super small one. Tall and small. Tall and small. You got both. That's a good one. That's a good one. What about you? What is your name? My name is Jacob, and my favorite Christmas tradition is putting the uh, lights on the house. The lights on the house. That's always a fun. One. All right. All right. What about you? What is your name? Lacey. Lacey. And what is your favorite Christmas tradition? Putting on the star. Putting on the star, you like doing it with your dad, your mom, or do you have like someone help you? My dad. Those are some fantastically festive Christmas traditions. But you guys want to hear some about other countries? Yes! All right, let's get right into this. So there's actually a country out there with a tradition called the pooping log. Ew! Yeah, sounds pretty nasty to me. But what, what this is, is they put a little smiley faced, a uh, little, little like log on their dinner table on December, and they have to like feed it different kinds of like sweets and nuts, and at the end of the year, it'll like poop out presents. Now, the question is, what country do you think this is from? Italy or Spain? You. Spain. Spain, is that right? Great job, it is Spain. Here you are, good sir, for your 10 Jolly Cosmic Cash. All right, time for the second question. There's, there's a certain country out there that decorates their trees with spiders and spider webs. I know, kind of interesting, right? Isn't that crazy? All right, the two ones that you have as an option is Ukraine or Greece. What do you think it is? Ukraine. Ukraine, it is Ukraine. Here you are for your 10 Jolly Cosmic Cash. All right, a little bit of background on this actually is a woman who actually could not afford to decorate her Christmas tree. But then one day on Christmas day, she woke up and there was actually spider webs all over the Christmas tree. A spider made that and it looked very good. All right, that is all we have time for today. But before I leave, do you guys want to take an elfie? Yeah! It, it's like a selfie, but with an elf. You guys want to do it? Yeah! All right, you guys ready for this? Say cheese. Cheese. Sweet. Oh, and speaking of sweet, here's some candy for you guys. Yeah. Awesome. Back to you, Hannah and Christian. Have your elf a merry little Christmas. Thank you, Click Tinsel Toes. I just learned so many new things. Me too. It's so neat to look at all the different Christmas traditions around the world. It sure is. But there's one tradition that remains a classic of all time, and that's reading the Christmas story. Oh, for sure. I know we started reading it last week, so let's continue it today with our good friend and your sister, Cammy. Thank you, Christian and Hannah. I'd love to continue this story with you because it's the one and only original Christmas story. Now, this part of the story can be found in the Bible in the book of Matthew. Last week, we talked about Mary and how she trusted God and put her hope in Him when she found out she was pregnant with Jesus. Today, we're going to talk about Joseph. Joseph was the man who was about to be the husband of Mary. But before they got married, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. Traditionally, this type of promise to be married was special, but Joseph was upset to hear that Mary was pregnant before they were married because he thought she'd broken a promise to him. Now, the Bible tells us Joseph was a righteous man. That means he wanted to do the right thing. So instead of being mean to Mary and embarrassing her, he planned to just break up with her quietly. 
You see, Joseph didn't really understand what was going on until God sent an angel to explain it to him. The Bible says, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. God wanted Joseph to know that Mary didn't do anything wrong. And he told Joseph it was okay to take Mary as his wife because the baby inside her was God's son. God also told Joseph how important this baby would be because he was Jesus. And Jesus came to save all of us from our sins, which are the bad things that we do. When Joseph woke up from his dream, he had a choice to make. He had to decide if he was going to trust God's plan and get married or trust his own plan and stop the wedding. Let's see what happened. The Bible says, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. Joseph decided to trust God's plan and get married. It's not always easy to trust God's plan, but it's so important. If Joseph would have chosen not to trust God, he would have missed out on getting to help raise God's son. But since Joseph did trust God's plan, he became like a stepdad to the most important person in the whole world, Jesus. So that's why, just like Joseph did, God wants us to trust His plan. Trusting God's plan is a decision we have to make every single day. When school isn't going well, we can trust God's plan. When our parents fight, we can trust God's plan. And when things just don't make sense, we can still trust God's plan. No matter what, we can always trust God's plan because God's plan is the best plan. Be sure to join us again next time as we talk about even more Christmas traditions around the world. And to continue the tradition of reading the one and only original Christmas story.